Serious do you know someone closely who turned out to be a murderer how were they before that incident? In my freshman year at high school I made friends with a bunch of the upper class guys. We played D&D and had a lot of fun being nerdy high school guys. One guy Eric and I became good friends and managed to get a few classes together. We spent most of that year hanging out. As in many friendships people sometimes have to move on. So I wished him luck in college and told him to write if he had time. This was in the time before most people had home computers. Nine months later I'm reading in my room I hear my mother yell my name. She doesn't usually yell, so I run downstairs to see my friend Eric's face on the news. He's been arrested for murder and it's bad. He killed a 8 year old girl to find out what it was like. I couldn't believe that this was the same friendly polite intelligent guy my mom had hugged and fed at our home. He never seemed off or weird to anyone it was a shock to everyone. So I've commented this story on some posts on reddit because I knew the girl from the documentary that got real popular called mommy dead and dearest. Her name is Gypsy and she and her boyfriend killed her mother. Her mother had some extreme munchausens by proxy where she made up a ton of illnesses Gypsy had. As a result, Gypsy was in a wheelchair, had a feeding tube, and was on a fuck ton of medications. She didn't actually need any of those things, but Gypsy had no idea. He mom had manipulated the fuck out of her. Anyway, I knew Gypsy when she was about 14 or 15. She seemed much much younger. I met her through a feeding tube support group, and we'd spoken in person a few times at the organization's yearly conference. I remember she didn't talk much. Her mom did the talking for her. She always had short hair, huge glasses, and always had blankets and stuff in her lap as she sat in her wheelchair. She was quite sweet, with a very high pitched voice, that was very innocent and childlike. I kept in touch with her on Facebook a bit as well, but not too often. She was a bit odd, and her and her mom's relationship seemed very strange even from my perspective. You never saw one without the other, which wasn't too terribly uncommon within the support organization, when it came to kids and their parents. I also remember her mom. She would ask me sometimes how, did you get off all therapies? Because at one point I was no longer needing tube feeds. And I explained how I'd done it, and I remember her looking at Gypsy super sad, and saying I just don't think that's possible for her. Gypsy had said nothing at the time. When I found out what had happened it was truly shocking. Gypsy's mom had passed her off as mentally challenged quite easily, and I honestly was under the impression that Gypsy was a bit slow, which was what everyone else thought too. And then to see those interviews with Gypsy where she seemed so certain, so well spoken, and so cold and calculating. It was just bizarre. That was not the girl I knew at all. Seems fucked but I understand to an extent where she's coming from. The treatment for the illness is her mother convinced everyone she had a hell on their own. And Gypsy wasn't completely aware that her mother was using her and abusing her the way she was. I guess she eventually started figuring things out and got fed up. I used to work at the pet store when I was 18. A widowed regular man in his 50s used to come in all the time and had a good relationship with our staff. He liked me a lot and flirted with me. He even added me on FB. I added him back thinking he was harmless. He would ask to hang out with me a lot, but I always declined. You can tell something was off with him. He just really liked to flirt with women and manipulate them when he spoke with them. He ended up shooting his ex GF point blank as she left her job, killing her, and then turning the gun on himself in a murder-suicide one day, left behind a daughter with no mother. Went to college in the early 1980s with a guy who was always going on about his sexual exploits with women. Like who he had done it in a hot tub with, whose virginity he took under what circumstances, etc. Really over the top with it. About 10 years after graduation I found out he finally admitted to himself he was gay, had a one night stand with a guy, then promptly killed him. I think he's in prison for life now. I wouldn't say I knew them closely, but I did have two guys in my graduating class who are in prison for murder now. One of them killed his aunt using a knife, screwdriver, brick, and a few other things. I always did think he was violently unstable, and reported him once in school for having a bowie knife, that I was convinced he was going to use on someone. Got him suspended. The second guy is actually in prison for hiring someone to kill his wife. 
which also fits with his personality as I remember it. He was the guy who would bow up to you and talk trash, but never do anything to back it up. Always tried to act super smart too, like he was the smartest person he'd ever met. Probably explains why he defended himself in court. Also explains why he lost. A guy who I was friends with in high school lost his mind and jumped out a window from quite a tall building. He was injured pretty severely and was never quite the same after. He had some bad emotional issues along with lasting physical ailments and could not live on his own. Some years later he seemed like he was doing much better. Stable job, went to the gym a lot. He still had to live with his parents and was still a bit odd but seemed happy regardless. He made a post on his FASA book about finding a better job and seemed quite positive. Then, a few days later, I wake up to the news that he murdered his parents and then himself. My friend who we will call Thomas killed his two brothers at 13. I knew him from a very young age and he was always skittish but kind. One night he gets up and smothers one brother then stabs the other with a kitchen knife like 20 something times. Then he just went back to bed covered in blood. He got out of the prison system at 22 and he still seems the exact same as he was before which worries me. I had a beer with him yesterday. My teammates, high school basketball, dad killed his mom and himself. He concluded that she had cheated on him, so in his kitchen, in front of my teammate and his little sister, he pulled the trigger on his mom. Then, he led police on a chase downtown, and killed himself on the street. We were seniors at this time, and we all knew his father very well. He had coached our AAU team a couple of times, and was very active with the team. He didn't seem like a person that would do something like that. My adoptive uncle is an attempted murderer, but since the motive in the sentence is the same as an actual murderer's, I think he counts. He was always a smart dude and a talented artist, but ever since he was a small child, he had pretty bad anger management issues. He nearly took off my dad's, his older brother, left foot with a lawnmower when they were elementary school because my dad pissed him off. He got expelled from most schools for getting into fights, and was in and out of prison ever since he was 14. He got his jet when he was 16. Strangely enough, he was really good with animals, and was never mad around them. By the time I was born, he was in prison for assault. Before he attempted to beat a prison guard to death, he was learning to speak French by watching Radio Canada Tele, and was giving prisoners some really fucking great tattoos. He was incredibly knowledgeable about the news and very well read. From what I can tell, he's still learning French, reading, and watching the news but now from a supermax prison, where he will most likely spend the rest of his life. I grew up with a guy that is now serving life for first degree murder. It honestly wasn't a shock at all. Him and a group of people ran some guy off the road that was riding his bike late at night. The beat him, left the scene, came back and beat him some more left the scene again, then came back, and beat him some more. Nope, wasn't a shock at all. Was friends with a guy in grade 9 slash 10. He'd always pick me up to hug me when I saw him. We weren't super close, but enough that we talked about once a week. We flirted on and off, and I had a bit of a crush on him. One morning I woke up and checked Facebook and all of my friends are freaking out. I can't believe you would do something like this. You sick bastard etc etc. Turns out the night before he went on a coke binge, broke into a house, killed the 30 year old woman there, raped her body, and molested the 2 year old. He was charged as an adult and I believe he will be out next year. Never imagined he could have done that. There was a girl I knew in high school, we hung out most days, and every few days I end up seeing her whole family. She had a younger brother who was kinda shy, and would pop around every now and then. A few years after high school he became really good friends with a lot of my friends through college, and so it still run into from time to time. Sometime during college he got into a fight with his GF, and ended up killing her. It hit the news a few times, that he was on the run and I always said there was no way, that was the same guy I knew. A few days later he shot himself in his truck, while on his way back to town to see his parents. That's when I knew for sure it was the same guy. A student at my school murdered two people at the age of 15 who were neighbors. He was a discipline problem in school, but his mother always came to school to berate the teachers and offend him. 
there was mental illness in the family. Several of his teachers told me that they never dared turn their back on the kid. His best friend was rumored to be a partner in the crime, but was never prosecuted. At the age of 7 the best friend had hard little angry eyes that one couldn't see into, if that makes sense. Convicted killer died young in a traffic accident, and best friend died in a weird accident involving a train. I was best friends with this kid when I was younger, like elementary and middle school. He was always acting out a little, but nothing too serious. Lived with his grandparents, never had any idea where his mom or dad was, he never really talked about them, and his grandparents were really strict. We got in trouble quite often, but really just petty shit. Worst was picking up a purse that someone had left in the middle of the street, left on roof of car and fell off, and taking the money out of it. Like 8th slash 9th grade year, he just up and disappeared, and found out he went to live with his mom in Chicago. Comes back a year or two later, and is a completely different person. Talks about being in a gang in Chicago, no idea if it was true or not. He starts going way off the deep end, robbing houses, stealing, assault, generally not giving a shit. In and out of juvie for a while. After high school he ends up getting out, see him around, and talks all this shit about how he is turning his life around. Ended up robbing my roommate's family's place with another friend of ours. Gets busted and goes to big boy jail for a while. After a few years, he gets out, and this time there is no illusion that he is up to no good. He's got the complete jailhouse Mackie of a teardrop tattoos around the eye included, and is essentially dealing drugs and robbing houses again. I talk to him, and we hang out a little bit. He tries to make amends for the robbery, but we both, rumored and I, keep our distance cause we really don't want to fuck with this guy and we don't want him pissed off with us. Funny thing was, I still got the impression that this dude would have laid down in traffic for me if I needed him to. Not too long after, I find out that he killed someone and burned the body in a drug deal gone bad, allegedly. Wasn't a huge surprise at that point, and wasn't a surprise that the victim was someone from the same neighborhood we grew up in. He just did not have any fucks to give about many other people, and his selfish motivations would overrule his compassionate side in every critical situation. I really wished he could have turned it around, but there was just no saving this guy, and I'm really glad he is off the streets and out of my life. In college a guy down the hall was pretty cool, we hung out, partied, he'd play N64 with my roommates and me. He had a roommate that was a couple years old and not around much. Then one afternoon I came back to my room and there were cops and reports and crap all around. A friend shows me the newspaper and the guy down the hall's roommate is on the front page, murdered, police asking for someone to id him. Next day, find out the guy down the hall had killed his roommate. Nasty business, back of the head, point blank range, small caliber, deserted area, body left without it, obviously pre-planned with some care and forethought. Guy admits to it later. Never tells why, no known motive, never explains. Weird thing is, I hung out with him after the fact, before he got caught. Seemed distracted, but actually apologized to me later for being out of it, without explaining why. The whole thing messed with my head for a bit. Interesting question. I knew this guy back in Pakistan. He was in my school, but at some point his family took political asylum and moved to the UK. They were futile people with copious amounts of money and resources. Around 2005 Aish, the conditions were laxed, and while his father still could not come back to Pakistan, he himself could. He came back for a month, and in that time, we had a reunion, and it was lots of fun. Just hanging out every day and all that good stuff. Great guy all around but very short tempered. One night some guy rubbed him the wrong way, because the guy complained about my friend revving his heavy bike, and making lots of noise in the parking lot. My friend pulled out his pistol after a heated exchange and shot the poor guy dead. Karma wasn't too happy and only a week later my friend was riding his bike late at night, when he t-boned a van which sent him, and his bike up in the air, only to have his bike land on him. I wasn't there to witness this. I just heard accounts of the eyewitnesses. He was taken to the hospital, but he succumbed to his injuries hours later, and was pronounced dead two days, before he was supposed to go back to the U.K. All in all, I was happy that justice was served in this way, because no cop would touch him. 
had he lived, he wouldn't have been prosecuted for his crime. Such is the way the rich live in some countries. This is when he is at odds with the ruling party. Imagine the chaos when he is in the ruling party. I knew Omar Mateen, the shooter in the Pulse Club. He was very aggressive and would get into fights with my friends a lot of the times. He bullied someone I knew and that kid's older brother whooped him. We just thought he was a jerk. We would all hang on the basketball court. He was always interested in becoming a police officer and he became a guard or something of that sort. Someone really close to me went to his house a few times and had dinner with his family multiple times. He said the family was pretty conservative in a way, but they seemed normal. I lived in central Florida when the shooting happened, and it was surreal. Right now nobody in my family believe he could have laid waste to so many on his own, because someone else close to me is a doctor at Orange County, and said there were so many bullets and so many victims that it looked like a gang.